Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, today I'm going to give you an overview on running a quick little part we have uh, going through the shop here on the Southwestern Industries DPM2 milling machine. So this is my track DPM mill. Uh, it's the DPM2, which is the R8 uh, type spindle. Um, I prefer that for the prototyping work that I do. Um, I love these machines. They have a whole different uh, lineup of machines available. They do lathes also. Um, this machine makes a lot of what I do possible and a lot easier. Um, these machines are uh, CNC and manual. So these machines can be moved with a hand crank just like the traditional bridge port. And this one happens to have the uh, digital hand reels on it that I added on later. So what you're moving is not the mechanical ball screw, it's a encoder and you have control over the speed of it in several different ranges um, and it also lets you run through an entire program by cranking the hand wheel manually. <clears throat> this is great if you have a new material you're not familiar with and you're not sure the exact speeds and speed settings uh, to use on that material on this particular machine. You can start out seeing what it feels like and sounds like manually uh, and then decide what feed rate and speeds you want to use for your automated run. Um, this machine will do two axis as well as three axis uh, cuts. <coughs> you can select from either mode. Um, there is a fourth axis. I think you can get a positional rotary for it. Um, I recently got this guy, which is a manual um, tilting rotary table, which I'll show more on later. I haven't uh, gotten it calibrated or set up yet, but it gives you two axes uh, manually addition to the X, Y, and Z. Um, these machines are also auto lubricated, so it does have a, a lube tank that is set on a timer. It only runs when the spindle is running. You can um, pulse it manually if you want to add more for whatever reason you're running something. Um, it is a programmable spindle also, so you can do full three axis um, 3D milling with it. Uh, if you bring in a program from Mastercam or whatever else uh, you may be running, it'll even take files from um, Mach 3 and Meshcam and those kinds of things. Uh, you might have to do some editing, but once you get the format, it's pretty easy. So this is a wood project that I have going for a uh, Bay Area tech company that I do work for. And I just want to give you a quick view of this process. <laughs>
So that just cut three complete parts in one cycle. And uh, it is a what's called a compression cutter. So the flutes are pulling material towards the center while it's cutting instead of uh, pulling it up and out like it would on a normal end mill. So you get a really good finish on both sides. And it's a thin like three layer plywood. This is a project for what I believe is a small aircraft or drone, um, some part of the construction for that. So this is a, uh, another thing I wanted to show is uh, this rack here and these trays are all removable. And uh, this is called a bun pan rack. It's actually made for baking, uh, but I found it very useful for doing production on any volume of small parts. Um, so if you have a bunch of something small to do, you can stack them in there, you can remove a tray and put larger parts in there. And I also like these egg crates for small, delicate parts. You can keep track of the <clears throat> number you've produced and it also protects them from uh, rolling around and getting damaged. They come in different configurations and different sizes. You can get a full height um, double-size rack. They're very cheap. Great option for uh, home production. So that's it for today. I wanted to give you a quick look at what we were running. Um, this is a great example of a quick simple project that this machine is made for. Um, I look forward to showing you lots of other stuff on this machine and other ones. Um, I have lots of other projects in the works and coming up. And um, yeah, if you have any questions or, or thoughts, let me know.